Standing Order 1083H and the motion adopted by the Committee on Tuesday, April 9, 2024. The Committee is commencing today its study of access to documents of the National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg. Uh, I will um, just remind everyone, without going through uh, this lengthy uh, note uh, about the earpieces, uh, that we want to make sure that we avoid injury to our interpreters and those that are in person. Ms. Menard, when, when you're not talking, if you can just put it aside. Uh, same for members that are here as well. So without uh, further ado, I am going point to... Point of order? Uh, I have a, a point of order uh, from... Point of, point of order. Okay, so I've got Mr. Green on a point of order and then I've got uh, Mr. Villemure on points of orders before, before we begin. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Green. On the point of order, you referenced a, a motion. I would ask that you read that motion, reread that motion pertaining to uh, today's meeting. Ken, um, and I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to get the uh, clerk to uh, to read the motion. Uh, Mr. Green, stand by. Motion once she pulls it up. Uh, the motion adopted as amended reads that in light of the February 28, 2024 tabling of the Winnipeg lab documents, which contain the government's own findings, uh, concluding that the People's Republic of China and its entities infiltrated Canada's top microbiology lab, a national security breach representing a very serious and credible threat to Canada, and given that access to this information has been denied to Parliament and all Canadians by the government for several years, the committee undertake a study for three meetings pursuant to standing orders 10H3H and 6 and 7 of the government's reasons to deny access to it by Parliament and Canadians, provided that the committee report its findings to the House and the request pursuant to standing order 109 a comprehensive response from the government and call the following witnesses to appear for one hour per witness. Anthony Rota, former Speaker of the House of Commons. Philip Dufresne, former law clerk of the Parliamentary Council of the House of Commons. Ian Stewart, former President of the Public Health Agency of Canada. The Minister of Health, the Honourable Mark Holland. The Minister of Public Safety, Democratic Institutions and Intergovernmental Affairs the Honourable Dominic LeBlanc, <clears throat> and any other witnesses that the committee deems necessary. Now, before I, I go back to you on that, uh, Mr. Green, um, I, just, I just want to inform the committee that uh, when I was dealing with the office and the clerk was dealing with the office of the law clerk, uh, they are the ones that suggested that we invite Michelle Bedard and not Philip. Michelle uh, was already working for the office of the law clerk <coughs> and probably have better answers in the event uh, that the committee is not satisfied with the meeting today, then Mr. Dufresne can still be invited. Uh, I did invite the Information Commissioner, Canada's Information Commissioner, uh, as, uh, as a chair prerogative. We have three hours today. Uh, from, May from May 17th to June 10th, unfortunately, the Commissioner will be out of the country. So I thought uh, that it would be a good idea to have Canada's Information Commissioner here at least to fill in one hour. Um, I know that the invitation talked about Mr. Stewart, who's the President of the Public Health Agency of Canada. He's no longer in that position, as committee members are aware, and so we can only invite him if we find him. Uh, and uh, we're, we're working on that. Anthony Rhoda and the two ministers have been invited to the committee, and we are waiting for confirmations on potential dates, and uh, as you know, as members of the committee know, booking ministers usually results in a lot of back and forth. So, um, that being said, two out of the three uh, witnesses that have been asked by the committee with respect to the departments that they serve, uh, including the President of the Public Health Agency today, is, is going to be appearing with us in the third hour, uh, the office of the law clerk uh, has sent uh, uh, Mr. Michelle Bedard is here. 
uh, to address the committee's concerns. I'm going to remind the committee, too, that the motion that was passed uh, called for up to three meetings. Uh, this is meeting number Mr. one. Mr. Chair, yeah, I, just, haven't, I, haven't stated, I haven't stated any of my point of order. I simply asked okay. you I'm just explaining, to read that. I'm just explaining yeah, where I, we're at, Mr. Green. Uh, from my perspective as chair, as to the reasons and rationale uh, where we're at. So if you let me finish, I'll get to your point of order. The uh, third, the other point, the last point that I'll make is that we have up to three meetings uh, with respect to the Lip Winnipeg Lab issue. As I mentioned, we did invite the ministers uh, to come as well as Mr. Rhoda. Uh, so we are going to be able to, I suspect and hope, to fill those meetings. But um, I just wanted to provide clarity to the, uh, the committee as to where we're at today and the witnesses that are appearing before us and the rationale as well. So go ahead, Mr. Green, with your point of order, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, I find your actions rather unusual in unilaterally taking what you have determined to be the chair's prerogative when indeed it is the custom of the masters of their own domain. Uh, you, sir, are simply there to chair the processes and, and procedures within the course of uh, the due planning. The planning has to come from the direction of the committee, sir. You have unilaterally taken this opportunity to call a meeting without any consideration to the other parties involved. You'll recall in a motion of our first meeting, uh, I believe it was dated um, December 13th, 2021, that you were enacted under the, under the accorded uh, standing orders to hold meetings and uh, moved by Ms. Hefner, who's, who's back with us today, that you be authorized to hold meetings and to receive evidence and to have it published when a quorum is not present. Now, hold meetings and calling meetings, uh, it has been my experience uh, within my time on the House uh, side here that there are subcommittees that plan the work and I think what I'm particularly agitated by is the fact that even within the course of this term you'll reflect back on times in which members have used 106s to have an emergency meeting. I feel that it is your uh, actions today uh, have been used to surreptitiously avoid having to negotiate with any of the other parties present to call a meeting uh, down the final stretch. Uh, and I should note for the record, for the media who's watching and everybody else, that every single conservative led committee is doing the same thing without the ability to have what I Point think is order, a common chair. courtesy, uh, Point to have the common courtesy of, order, of a planning committee. Hold on now, now on my plan, on my point of order, uh, Mr. Chair, you'll note that the standing orders uh, order, require order from the same order. day, dated December 13th, that they require having an in-camera meeting that allows the witnesses to be determined prior to the commencement of a study. You've not done that. You've effectively blocked out the Bloc, the Liberals, and the NDP from determining the course of action of this study without any conversation or consideration for scheduling. I find that to be uh, an authoritarian use of your position and highly problematic. Okay, thank you uh, for that, Mr. Green. I did, uh, I did explain uh, earlier uh, where we were at with respect to the witnesses. I will reiterate that we have two more meetings that we can call and invitations have been sent. Uh, I took it upon myself to ask Ms. Menard to be here knowing that she was going to be out of the country until June 10th. We had an extra hour today to deal with her, and I thought uh, Ms. Menard added uh, to the discussion. So uh, that's my. It's rationale. not your position to take to take these types of liberties. The, the other to thing, decide on the, behalf of the committee thank you, who Mr. and when the we. The other meet. thing, the other thing that I will say is that, uh, and you'll recall or may may not recall, that on May seventh, I indicated to the committee that I'd ask for deviation time because we. Uh, we're running out of time very, very quickly. And I sent you an email. I sent all members, including the vice chairs, and Mr. Vilmir was included, and you were as well, indicating... That, that's not factual, sir. Deviation in time means extended time. Not once did you ever bring in your testimony. You can reflect on the answer. Uh, meeting in the course of our constituency weeks, where all of us, I'm sure, had very busy schedules, uh, had commitments that were in our communities, and you arbitrarily took your power as the chair 
to circumvent any kind of committee discussion in a way that I think is an abuse of well, your power, sir. Point of order, absolute yep. abuse on, of Mr. your power, Mr. Kirk, and, and it turns it it turns committees like this into absolute chaos when there isn't a modicum of decorum well, and when there isn't order. a modicum of courtesy to be paid on the outset of these studies. You do not have the power, sir. This isn't a point of order. Um, you now, do not have the power. Mr. It Green, is. It's a scheduling we're, question. Okay, so of course I, it's a point I've of order. I got your point. I appreciate it's absolutely your point. a point of order. I appreciate your point, Mr. Green. I'm going to move on because I've got Mr. Vilmure on a point of order. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Vilmure. Merci, Monsieur le Président. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's something that I find interesting. We planned for three meetings. This is the first. During the first meeting. The witnesses that we have are not on the witness list that we had originally, and I find that concerning because, and I love hearing from Ms. Maynard, but I'm concerned that we won't be able to meet the deadlines that we've set for ourselves. I know that Ms. Jeffrey is replacing Mr. Stewart, but we had asked for Mr. Stewart. Same thing for Mr. Dufresne. So I'm wondering... The committee's motion was clear. We want to talk about the reasons why the government refused access to members on the Winnipeg Lab documents. Ms. Jeffrey was not there at the time, and neither was the other witness. And so I'm concerned to see that the heart of the motion that... Oh, we won't be receiving the witnesses that we had set out originally. Merci, uh, Monsieur. Thank you, Monsieur Villemur. I have already explained how we arrived in this position. We invited other witnesses to this committee. Progress right now, Mr. Vilmir. So we are we are going to with the meetings that we do have scheduled to attempt to get the uh, witnesses uh, here, including the ministers whose invitations have already been sent out. Uh, I am. Um, I mean, we're. I'd like to go to Miss Maynard, uh, but I I do have. Uh, is it on a point of order, uh, Larry? Are you still up on a point of order because you had your hand up? My point of order was articulated by Mr. Barrett. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Uh, and then, uh, Ms. B Ms. Hepner, on, do you have a point of order? <clears throat> yes, uh, just to support my colleague Matthew Green's point of order, I thought everything he said was completely in line. I find this, uh, the way that this committee has been called, completely bizarre. I don't find that the uh, rationale is there from what you've just uh, described to us. Mr. Chair, it's not like this study is okay. actually... Lisa, we're getting it. We're getting into debate here. It's been here, studied so at another committee, but so, uh, Matthew's absolutely right, <clears throat> and I want to echo his outrage. This right. should not be happening. Getting, you should not be able to debate. circumvent. Well, okay, point Mr. Of order. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Thank Chair, you. my hands up next. Um, um, on Mr. A, Chair, on a point of you've order. You've made a decision. Yeah. You've made a decision. I'm now challenging the chair. Okay. And and what are you challenging the chair on, uh, Mr. Green? Just so that I'm clear. On your ability to arbitrarily set the course of this committee okay. without consulting with us on the Just witness hang on a sec. list. We're still on a point of order, Mr. Green. So uh, You said you made a decision, and so now I'm challenging your decision. Just hang on a sec, uh, Mr. Green. So, Mr. Mr. Green, uh, you can challenge me all you want. Um, the authority that I have as a chair to call a meeting, uh, 
uh, which I've done and I've given my reasons for, um, cannot be challenged. There is nothing to challenge. Um, so, you know, I'll leave it to you. Uh, if you want to uh, have a procedural uh, motion a, a little bit later on or a dilatory, that's, that's perfectly your right. But there is effectively nothing to challenge at this point because I've called the meeting. The meeting is going to proceed. Uh, unless there are other points of orders, and I am going to get Ms. Menard to speak to the committee and to uh, start the process of having a meeting today. So uh, I do see uh, Ms. Khalid has her hand up, and I, I, on a point of order, Ms. Khalid, I see your head nodding, so it's on a point of order. Go ahead, please. Sure. Uh, sure, thanks, I believe I had, uh, had asked for a point of order oh, before sorry. Ms. Khalid. I'm going to, Mr. Couric did, uh, did say yes. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Couric, and then I'll come to you on a point of order. Go ahead, Mr. Couric. Thanks, Chair. And just, just to reiterate the fact that we're now 21 minutes into a meeting when we should be hearing okay, I don't from the get, Commissioner, so let's get to work. I don't want to get into debate. Uh, on a point of order, Ms. Khalid, go ahead. On a point of order, no debate. Go ahead. Uh, absolutely, Chair. I, and again, like uh, just to to give my two cents on on what your ruling and your statement has been uh, on the point of order raised by uh, by Mr. Green. I believe that the the uh, intent and the spirit of the motion that we had originally passed on this specific issue has not been kept with what is uh, what is uh, ensued here in uh, in today's meeting and I just want to register uh, that uh, that you've not done right by by what this committee uh, has been trying to do over these past number of uh, of weeks and months on this specific issue and okay, I, I would really debate. encourage you chair to, debate, to really uh, take into account what uh, what our committee members have yeah. to say yeah I appreciate that and uh, I feel that I am acting uh, within my authority as chair. I appreciate that. Uh, we do have, as I said earlier, two more meetings, two more meetings. Two of the witnesses that are here today are representing agencies that are that are part of that motion. Um, we will uh, work towards getting everybody within those two meetings to appear before this committee. So, Ms. Menard, I appreciate that you've been waiting patiently, and I do appreciate the fact that you are here today to provide uh, testimony to this committee in relation to the study as it relates to the Winnipeg Lab. Uh, you have the floor. You have five minutes to address the committee. Go ahead, Ms. Menard. Thank you. Merci. Uh, 